Alright then guys, welcome to the video, welcome back to the channel and this is my 2004 Honda Civic Type R EP3 and this has just been on a huge underside restoration journey with the wonderful guys up at Motion Motorsport. Now in this video I'm actually going to compile all of the footage I have from this entire process into one video. So this starts with a full health check of underneath the car and following through the entire process for you. So if you're planning to do the same thing for your car this is your one-stop shop of everything you're going to need to know about how much work and time and everything that goes into this. So without further ado let's jump in to this entire process. And you join me on a a very foggy, very cold morning. I've had an absolute nightmare getting all the way up to Motion Motorsport. First part is going to be getting this Civic looked at underneath, just get the ball rolling on, well, or even for me actually just finding out what's actually wrong with this thing underneath or the things that need to be done to get this thing repaired on the underside, get under seal, all that sort of stuff. But this is sort of the starting point of figuring out actually what is up with this thing, how much work needs to be done, and then I guess I'll eventually find a price as well. Let's jump inside, get this thing up, and I guess see how bad this thing really is. Okay guys, so Dave's just started up, my car is bringing it in now. Now, but I thought I would show you around what is here. Things like this DC5 that's one step closer. This might have been in the background of my videos before. This thing is full restoration, everything. But we've also got left-hand drive, Civic Cup car, or I think that's what it is, or 24 hour car. I can't remember what Dave said. This thing is crazy, look in here. This thing's wild. But yeah, here comes the Civic. Absolutely filthy from the drive here, which is very upsetting because I did actually wash this yesterday. Yeah. So then, this is the real reason we're here. This is the bit I'm scared about. Ah, that's broken. There we go. Quick start the session. Yeah, the wing on this side is getting a bit crusty. That there, like it slipped off a jack. Or yeah, like yeah, that was pre me as well. I mean, I'll pull the slip off in a second now. I'm almost guarantee I'll need an arch panel. The way you do the arch panel, we can pull yeah. that down. Honestly, it's pretty mint. King of Philanex in good neck. When I bought this, looking for us didn't even cross my mind. You've done all right, mate. It's uh, mint. Honestly. If, unless, like, you were. When we do things, we take every, every component off the car. Yeah. And the reason we do that is like, how are you supposed to treat that in that area without taking this off? Yeah. You can't. So all you end up doing is just covering it with under seal. But leaving it row in underneath and yeah. making it worse. Yeah. Um, and then when you come to try and repair it, you've then got to go further into, or taking longer to remove the existing under seal that someone's put on it to be able to get to the point where you can fix it. Whereas at this minute, how it is now, is actually a better position than if it's caked in black under seal. And yeah. It looks pretty. But you've still got to take this off to treat it. Yeah. So you can't do it like when people say, oh, we'll do stage one or an under seal for 500 quid. Crack on because you're just hiding stuff like that and you're not making it any better. You need to take everything off again to get this treated. How can you treat that without taking the tank off? You can't, it's impossible. How can you get to the outer side without taking the skirts off? How do you get to any of these bits without removing components? You, you just can't. You've got to take everything off to be able to treat it properly. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just prolonging the inevitable. Hiding a multitude of sins and making it waiting for them to come back or letting the next owner inherit it. But fundamentally, the, your car is pretty good um, and much better than 90% than of them, 95% of them now. Like I say, aside from this here, this sort of poor repair where it's fell off a jack, although by itself isolated isn't that much of a problem because you need this rear sill section. Um, we'll take the rear wheels off in a second to pull the arch liners out, just double check the, the rear arch liners properly. I would assume, based upon experience in the past that we're going to need an arch panel here in this section but then that gives you the opportunity to treat the inner silt or the behind the speaker area around yeah. here and at the same time we can pull this out 
cut out and replace that. Well, so you can pull the dent down. You're never going to hide that blob as well that someone's put on there. Floor pan area, really common, not too bad. But between this seam is where the rust is starting to grow. So you can see all of the seam sealer is coming out on it now. So what we do is pull that back, get something in there, pull the two seams apart, clean it up, put it back together again and re-spot weld it. This is a really common area of corrosion as well, around here, but again, your car is really good. As far as we go, I would say this was, or in the 2% of the remaining ones, <laughs> in, in decent condition. So. Wow, okay, that's good to know. So that one's an arch panel, for sure. But the lip of the arch is in really good condition, which is rare. This essentially is why these are terrible, because all of that shite builds up there yeah. and the moisture just trapped up into the panel. But again, it's been under seal. Yeah, that was me. So what we do is just hide it with that. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So you can't tell. But nothing wrong anymore. Most people do. So what's the verdict, guys? Do you reckon this is going straight through? Exactly the same. So it's one of the arch panel. But yeah. again, the arch is in really good condition. Treat that at the same time as when we pull the arch panel out. And again, because when, once you do this, you get better access to the behind the speaker area. Yeah, 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 yeah. And obviously, like we were talking about with this outer sill, once the skirt's off, we can pull that down, cut out the section, and replace it. As far as we go, every EP3 on the road now needs some form of repair work, whether it's the mm, silver yeah. rear arches. Ollie, you, 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 <laughs> I don't know how you put it again, <laughs> looked in the, a, a really good condition car. The common areas of rust, the arches and the sills, things like that, they all go. This only needs two arch panels, a little bit of a, a, a rear section of the sill and the outer sill. Obviously when you start grinding things back, that can expand and you start to sort of uncover more nasties, but because this car's not been under sealed. You can see the condition of the shell already rather than it being hidden by under seal. Um, so don't- Don't do what I did. Yeah, yeah, don't cover it with uh, with under seal in the first place. If there's any rust there, you've got to go back to bare metal, treat the treat the rust and then protect it. If you just try and jet wash it off and then wire brush it to get the rust, the loose stuff off, you just don't inherently make it worse. It, it only ever grows underneath that. And to protect these properly now, there's no sort of stage one or stage two or quick under seal because you just cannot get into the areas that rust starts to grow from. You have to go back to a bare shell, uh, take all the components off and treat it properly and encapsulate it. This DC5 is a prime example of why things can't be under sealed and then hidden. But this had so much metal work and fabrication with sills, arches, boot floors, bits of chassis leg, strut tops and, and everything because the thing had been under sealed immediately but not prepped or not protected. So you either end up getting to this stage eventually or scrapping it or you treat it properly at this stage and prolong the life of the car i mean yeah, that's why we do what we do there's not one quick fix or easy answer to this everything everything takes a lot of time to and a lot of time a lot of prep work and a lot of fabrication to be able to get the things to be right and loop right it's easy to mot repair something and chuck a patch on it and then the next year you've got to redo that patch and it's grown anyway um because you've not treated it properly so there's a lot of merit in doing it right and doing it once for uh, an element if you can consolidate a lot of the jobs so if you need Bushes and things like we spoke about with the US 2000, you can address those things whilst the car's in bits because fundamentally the, the half of the labor's already done while the bits of components are all lying on the floor. And if there's upgrades that you want to do, now is a good time to do it. When we do things, it gets done properly and then the brakes are bled and the wheel alignment and is done. So once the car's complete again, then you can drive the car away, it's A, protected and B, had uh, an element of service bits and uh, bits and bits along the way. So you've got a pretty good car really and it's well worth saving. Um, a lot of them we've seen are to the point where you, you, everything's saveable for this, but how much money do you have and how much money yeah. you have to spend, how much does the car mean to you? Um, whereas with yours, it's at the stage now where if you catch it now and do it right, it's then got 10, 15, 20 years of being driven on the UK roads again. Yeah. Or you leave it. Up and leave it, and then in two years' time, it's at a point where it's, you've got to then consider whether you write it off or not. Whereas, where's yours at? Is that now is perfect candidate to uh, to put some arches in it, put a couple of silk panels in, and then repair it and protect it. Um, yeah, don't leave it too long, but it's just too late. It's not a, a quick job to do, which means it's not a super cheap job to do, but again, you're better off spending the money once and it being right than, than spending it once and then going back and revisit it and going, yeah. oh, I wish I'd have done that differently the first time. The way that we do it means that the cars are still the same as when we first treated them. So we've got cars going back two, three years down the line now 
that still looked as good as when uh, we first did it. Because of what we do with the primer and the initial protection and then the encapsulation in the first place, if you chip the under seal, you've got to go back to bare metal, you've got two or three different levels of protection before that, so you can then touch things up with the under seal rather than having to grind it all back again, treat the corrosion because you've chipped it and then go back and re-protect it. So, I mean, the, the reason that we do what we do and the, the reputation that we have at the back of that is because it lasts. It also depends on if you are, as the owner, going to keep the car long term or not yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely. Even if you're not going to keep it and you're thinking of selling it, as a selling point, this is a great thing to do and it's a great advert. We document everything, you give us pictures and obviously on the receipt and everything of the, of the whole process so that when you do come to sell the car, whoever buys it can see what's been done and where. It's all well and good buying something that's been welded. We don't know where it's been welded, how it's been welded and, and any pictures of the, the process. You don't know what's been hidden. Whereas if you're buying something that's been repaired, but it's been repaired properly and been restored properly, that's actually a great selling point because you know you're not going to have to go back and revisit those areas. Mm. If you're going to keep the car long term, it's well worth doing. Even if you're going to sell the car and these areas need addressing, there's no point selling the car for less than what it's worth. You might as well spend the money, make the investment and then go on to sell it because it's worth better money in, in the form. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. And here are the couple of piles left by my car. Mainly mud and dust actually, not loads of rust, but a few little bits of rust here and there. Could have been a lot worse though, so this is exactly what today was about. That is sort of everything. I guess you're going to need to know if you're looking to get this sort of thing done as well. This is step one for me. I learned loads. Very glad my car's in pretty good condition. I mean, obviously it's an EP3 that's 19 years old. This is a very common thing for EP3, so I was expecting this. <laughs> And as you can see, the EP3 is up on the lift and I've got Dave here for Motion Motorsport because it is that time. It is finally happening. The car is getting pulled apart. So Dave, I just thought I'd get you in here to explain what is actually going on here. Obviously today we get the car in. It's covered in water and rain because the weather's typically British, which is lovely. But we get the car in today and we're gonna strip it all down, get all the panels off, the fuel tanks off, all the suspension components off it, just so we've got a bit of a blank canvas to work from as such. And we'll try and dry it off as best we can as well whilst it's in here. And then and hopefully make a start with the, getting the grinder out, which is obviously not a great job to do, but needs must and it is what it is. Because every car is different, it's very hard to give like a blanket cost because a lot of cars now have been under sealed already, which typically means someone's put it up in the air and gone and sprayed crap all over the bottom of it, which traps loads of moisture in and then makes our job really difficult at this stage. And you imagine trying to grind a metal panel with nothing attached to it. The metal cleans up really quite easily. When you try and grind a panel that's got rubbery, oily crap all over it, it just spreads that everywhere and then it hides a load of sins, hides issues that you would normally be able to see and makes the prep stage much, much longer. And so obviously when we had your car in initially, you need to make sure that when we're gonna do the underside, is it a case of just prepping it there's no rust treating everything and protecting it or are we repairing bits are there issues with the car currently that you want to repair along the way that makes it cheaper and more cost effective for you to do it at this stage than it is to protect it and then come back and start taking bits back off again to to replace it so obviously we made a bit of a plan to come back x amount of months down the line repair the bits that we found do the production side and obviously we're going to do the powder coated set with new bushes and bearings and things as well so the underside should look like a brand new car when it's finished and it gives you an idea of how long it will take the costs involved rather than coming here and me giving you a price and then going actually it needs both sills both rear arch panels floor pan repairs fill and x bushes blah, blah 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 a quote can turn into double that quite quickly if you don't come and see us first and obviously it makes our life much easier booking things into the diary when we have an allotted amount of time so if we uh, book something in for a week and it's actually four weeks worth of work things just pile up outside it makes it really difficult for us so yeah coming to see us first is well worth doing and it means that you can plan this stage there's no rush or no merit to rush anything of this nature because it takes a lot of time to do a lot of effort a lot of money and you want to make sure that you're making the best job you possibly can in one go rather than revisiting things off the back of that that is what has ended up with me today here with also choosing to do the full underside like powder coating and everything because basically off the back of that i was like well if everything's coming off anyway like it seems crazy not to do it now yeah. although it's a big another big chunk of money it'll be even more if you were to do it later down absolutely, the line absolutely yeah yeah and with all the best will in the world it looks really sad when you put old rusty bits back onto the a really nicely finished underside so yes it's an amount of money additionally but if you plan things properly and you're going to the extent of spending x amount of pounds on the car anyway 
it makes sense to just defer the point in time when you have the car booked in and just wait two months later, three months later, whatever it might be, and then just commit to spending that additional money because I promise you, it, it makes such a difference to how the bottom of the car looks. And obviously it'll drive brand new as well. As a, a residual selling point, it's great from a point of view, then you drive the car, it's great. And it doesn't look like ass when you've put loads of <laughs> old bits back on the bottom of it. Yeah. I mean, I think that was the main thing for me was that I knew that having all this stuff done, if I was to then put it back, it would just drive the same way and also not look as yeah, good considering you, how much there's I think time ev and everyone needs that little bit of a pat on the back when you do things. So like if you do anything to the underside of the car, fundamentally most of it you can't see. But if when you're driving it, you can feel a difference. And when you have a look through the wheel arch and you can see all new bits everywhere, then it almost makes you feel less... It's not really cheated out of money, yeah, but it, feel, exactly, it feels like what you've exactly. done is You've got so, like a tangible asset, if yeah. that makes sense, rather than something you're just driving around and not really feeling any difference. Yeah. Uh, obviously, fundamentally, you need to make a car safe and protect it for a long period of time. If you've got that in your mind anyway, and you're, all, you're putting the old bits back on, it doesn't really matter because you've still achieved what you wanted to achieve. But I think fundamentally, everyone wants to look at something and go, that looks the tits, rather yeah, than look yeah. at it and go, well, <laughs> it's okay for an MOT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. As you can see, the boys are already stripping this thing down you just saw the side skirt come off and it's literally tear down day everything is coming off the bottom of this thing and it's going to be the first time i've ever seen the car this bare as well so obviously i'm going to take you through the entire process of this so i guess there's nothing left to it let's get on to ripping this car apart arch liners are out so much of the car is apart already rear bumper is off i don't actually know the last time i saw this car without the rear bumper on so interesting to see the rear crash bar it's a bit surface rusty may not be too bad not sure but we've got side skirts off here We've got the rear bumper off here. We've got the front bumper off here, front grille and slam panel there. And obviously we've got the RPF ones here as well. And yeah, the car's looking pretty bare. It's looking like a normal Civic at the moment rather than a Type R. But as you can see here, this was my under sealing job. So I apologize to the guys in advance about this because obviously this is the bit that Dave was talking about. As you can see, we've got some holes in there. So all this stuff is getting sorted. This is crazy because this is the first time this Progress rear anti roll bar has been off the car since it actually went on. It's it's just crazy having everything come apart. All the years of hard work, it feels like it's all being undone now and it, that I guess it doesn't feel at this point like it's going to be any better, but obviously the end result is gonna be amazing. Just weird seeing all the parts I've put on over the years coming off. So I've actually known about this damage for a quite a long time since I think taking the front bumper off the first time, but as you can see here, this happened before I owned the car, but what it has actually actually done which I've only just found out is you can see this is supposed to be straight so basically this whole bit needs tweaking this way to be dead straight again so it's just ever so slightly pinched just up there so obviously something's hit it down there and pushed it like that <laughs> Something that I find hilarious is, as you can see, dotted across the floor are just the bolts from my car. It doesn't matter where they've come from because the joy of going with the full nut and bolt replacement is obviously everything that's going on is going to be brand new. But it's just funny, like, not picking it up and going, oh, I must remember where this comes from. <laughs> I just get chucks on the floor. I'm just chuckling to myself as, I, as it happens. <laughs> Just like that, guys, the car is completely stripped down. <laughs> For some sort of context, it is currently, right now, half 12. It's probably taken about an hour and a half to get to this point for me, the car literally driving in. It's pretty mental. So I've got Jake here. Just as a rough overview, how was it to pull apart? Is this one all pretty right? Pretty decent, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. You normally get the odd seize bolt. Some frames are a bit tight to come off, but other than that, it was mint. Quite a common one is the tank strap bolts. They always seize in, you have to cut out and repair them. But like I said, they've all come out, so it's nice. Normally with an untouched car, nothing comes out. <laughs> wow, okay, that's but good. Obviously, suspension-wise, we've had the suspension off in this prior, so we know it should come apart all right. On a scale of one to 10 of, because obviously yeah. you do a load of these, mm -hmm. so where does this fall, would you say? In terms of 
Just the Condition underside wise. condition and I guess yeah, the ease um, of it coming apart. <laughs> yeah, I would say this is a, a good eight. Oh really? Yeah, nice. a good eight. Yeah. Like I said, we've we've noticed a few little bits on it. Like I say, the arch panels to be expected now from these. Still a few bits we need to strip off yet, such as brake lines, fuel lines, and handbrake cables. Once they're out of the way, we can actually get into it. Boot floor, decent. These very common area for rot in here. But as you can see, yours is pretty perfect, really. There's hardly any rot at all on there. I'll take that. These quite common. All your chassis rail points and that. Always a bit scabby here. So once we take these back, we might have to put a little piece of repair and shrink from that again. Same here. A little bit. Arch panels. Everybody knows. Famous arch panels. Check behind your speakers. Dead common. So to be expected. But sill-wise, you've got all your bunk holes. Normally, they're one great big hole. So that helps a lot. Nice. So they seem solid either side. Previous in the past, it's been jacked up in the incorrect place. It's a bit of damage there. So once we take that back, we'll straighten that back out and strengthen it again if it needs to be. And the other bit was front chassis rail slash leg. It seems to have had an impact here before. Yeah, so I did mention this earlier. Before my ownership, so I don't really know what happened here. Someone stuffed it on a curb or whichever, but we're gonna take the radiator out of this and then we're gonna straighten the, all this back out and make that look like factory again. Surprisingly, it's done this here as well. So it's been a decent front impact. That's ended up bulging that up, but we can straighten this out, port powers, various tools and equipment we've got. We always notice small bits when we grind it back. There might be the odd little hole here and there, but until it goes back to bare metal now, that's all we can do. What we tend to do is note everything down with notice so nothing gets missed. Take it all back now and get messy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Also, in terms of all this stuff, it's, yes. just, it's hilarious seeing all of this because this is various years of mods that I've done and also various videos I've made on the car. All um, your hard work just yeah, back off me. Exactly. So was there anything with any of this stuff that was a bit of a nightmare or is this all looking not good? Not at all really. And with you going for a full powder coated set to go back on, we're not really too concerned over this. Obviously your dampers and that will strip down, we'll parts wash them, we'll clean all them back up. But other than that, like you say, you saw earlier as we're just chucking bolts on the floor, it's, it's not going to get needed. We replace every bolt with a fresh one. So we label all the discs, the calipers, everything per side because obviously your pads wear down to that disc yeah so all them get labeled up they go back on the correct or orientation it strip these clean them up send them for blasting and powder coating and then crack on with the shell now so this is everything from underneath the car i guess basically isn't it yes so all these little bolts and that we tend to just get rid of it ends up being too much hassle trying to recoat these and send less them down but all your major bolts so that's rear camber on bolts various bits front subframe and you out all these will get sandblasted resin coated bracketry any bracketry we have will get powder coated with the suspension arms and that. These are very common. These are the rear brake line brackets. Yours are pretty decent. I've already tapped them and tested them. So we'll blast them. They rot in the centre there. And it's quite a few MOT fails for them. Oh, right. So then your, your brake line's just hanging off. Uh, the wheel oh, right, okay. So, but no, they seem decent. Heat shields. They'll all get sandblasted and zinc coated back to silver. Are these also pretty common for rusting or? Yes, yeah, so it's very rare. This is the rear back box one. It's very rare that one saves. As you can see, the condition of it isn't the best, but we'll blast it. If it's got no holes in that in it, mate, we'll re put it back on. Oh, nice. Always get away with these. That's protected underneath the cat, center exhaust, and that's on the bulkhead. Yeah, they normally come out pretty decent. It's nice to know that my car isn't a bad one, <laughs> <laughs> no. which I guess I've known for a while, but it's just seeing it in this many bits, I think just yes. further cements that to me that I somehow got so lucky that I yeah. haven't got some rust bucket, basically. And solid, isn't it, really? Yes, yeah. the arch panels, but ultimately it's a very solid car. The main one now is it's always sills and arches regardless, and hopefully you don't need really much sill work at all. It's very nice and warm. As you can see, all the bits are on the floor. So the guys are now going to start stripping everything down to get it all cleaned up, get stuff ready to be sent off to powder coating. But also the underside of the car is going to get fully ground back and everything. So obviously this has been the easiest part. This has actually been only a few hours of work. The real work starts now. This is everything that is why this job takes the time that it takes. All begins from this point onwards. I'll be back in about a week or so to catch up with the guys and see what the progress has been.
We're back at Motion Motorsport and a lot has happened. <laughs> it looks very different, but yet the same in some weird ways. But I'm basically just gonna show you everything that's changed. There's been so much stuff that's happened underneath the car and there's some bits that have come back from powder coating. There's just various things to show you today to give you an update. There's also a box of all the stuff that's come off this car, which I will also show you as well, which is quite funny. And so, uh, by the way, I basically only just got here. So this is, you're kind of finding all this out at the same time as I am. As you can see, various things have happened underneath there has been some bits cut out that is what's happening today and there is bits that have been left for me to show you before they get cut out as well as you can see bits are getting cut out there this has all been cut back to the entire area where there is clean metal so there is absolutely no rust here and also this whole area has been repaired as well this is a brand new piece i'm gonna get the guys to talk about this in way more detail because obviously they can explain exactly what work has been done but before all of that i will show you the box of rust bits of stuff that's come out of this car because it's pretty crazy how much stuff has actually come out apparently the box weighs five kilos so let me show you this in here is pretty much everything that's come off in terms of been ground off the bottom of the car or has been cut out as you can see this is that rusty piece behind the wheel arch liner definitely seen better days look at that there you can see some of the repairs i tried to do behind the rear speakers up close as well and yeah this whole box is just full of all this stuff that has just come off of this car <laughs> So guys, we've got Dave here and what's happened over the last sort of week or so? Okay, so obviously you saw when we disassembled the car to get it to a point where we can start to, to use the grinder and come back to, to bare metal and see the true condition of the car. We've spent a few days underneath it with the grinder, taking everything back to bare metal where necessary. Some bits are in really good condition from the factory. There's no point in going back to bare metal in there i.e. these places right um, okay. so you just get all the, the stuff around you can go bare metal across the entire car but what you're doing is robbing it of some protection that's already there so yeah. the entire car's been back to to bare metal as much as you, is necessary if you have a look at it is where you'll see it's like 90 percent of it and then car gets hit with a rust converter then which is sort of like it stops the rust exactly where it is kills it then gives you a sort of like a base to prime from and then obviously at that stage you can see all of the bits that need to be repaired it's at a point now where we're going to start doing all the metal repair Pairs, cutting out metal and obviously there's a few other extra bits that we found along the way and obviously we touched upon the front rad support last time we were here where you thought it had like a small crash in the past which looked like sort of pretty innocuous but the further you get into it you see that there's a little bit more to it talk you through that in a second but essentially we're at a stage now where we can start to uh, start to cut it out and, uh, and start doing the metal work so i guess let's have a more detailed walk around underneath this thing and see the progress that's actually been made dave you were saying it's all bare metal, but looking a little purpley now, and then that is the rust converter. That's the rust converter, yeah. So everywhere that you can see which looks murky or sort of purple has been back to bare metal, all of the corrosion has been treated and ground back and then once that's done, the, the entire car gets dried off. We break clean in the entire shell so that we can start to rust convert it. We put the rust converter on there just so that once you've ground it back, you don't spend the next couple of days coming in and going, oh, getting the grinder back out and going back over rust. Because as with anything, when you leave it outside in this sort of weather and there's moisture in the air, it does start to rust again. So you've got to treat that immediately, which is what we do. And obviously in doing that, when you go back to bare metal, we can see now all of the areas that need addressing. Some of them we knew about in the first place from the health check, some of them were quite new or things that we've spotted along the way when you start to take seam sealer and stuff off so we'll have a look through that now so the first thing would be obviously we knew that the car needed a pair of arch panels for reference we've kept one side in and cut one side out so we can see it obviously this now is the original arch which obviously needs repair and was covered in ollie's lovely under seal <laughs> yes yeah, made the that. job much nicer than it needed to be and then obviously you've got sections of the sill here which have got holes in and need 
cutting out as well. Obviously, we don't grind that back because it's obviously something that needs repair and I'll get cut out. If you come to this side, if you pan around, you see all of the areas in the shell which get treated. There's a couple of bits here that are going to need doing as well. See how the hole's not really a, a nice uniform curve anymore. This is where this rots through. That's where the handbrake bungs go. So this will get cut out and a new piece put in there. And following around here, so the area on the other side where you can see the small hole in the NSL has been cut out. The entire arch panel's been cut out and then the corrosion around the lip and a little bit on the outer sill as well and then what we then do is obviously we've got the arch panel kits that we sell ourselves and we cut that out and prep the panel to go in but it also gives you access to this is the behind the speaker area so when you take the speakers out inside if any of you are going to go and look at an ep3 to buy absolutely get the speakers taken out so you can see what the condition of this is because obviously if you've got a car where someone's under sealed it or so i've tried to preserve this area you can only preserve what's in front of you which is the base of the car or the underside of the car the actual corrosion develops from the inside so if you can take the speakers out you can see this area obviously when that's got a panel in you can't that gives you a good idea of what this out a sill and in a sill and behind this arch panel is going to look like so obviously around it's been cut out the same thing will happen that side this gets stretched the same way as the, the rest of the car all of the corrosion is taken away the rust converters put in there then you have the rust encapsulator inside that and then the panel gets fitted that's what a prepped panel looks like and that then fits inside there and then we can spot weld up there and team weld around all the edges and then build all these areas up at the same time then as you move in along to the front of the car obviously your car has got really really good sills and the only real areas are small teeny bits there one at the rear and one there so there's not really any real merit in replacing this it's all literally as as it was in the factory really the, the corrosion on the top is so so minimal there's nothing there at all so we've cut big sections out to allow us to repair enough of the metal so there's no corrosion left in there at all both front and rear and obviously in doing this bit there's no real outer sill damage to speak of in this section but in this one next to the jacking point if you come around here you can also see that the outer sill Add a load of corrosion here so if you don't treat this when we do the inside all you're going to end up doing is let that seep through back from the inside and then ruin the sill again so we have to treat that whilst we're there at the same time front arches again nothing really to speak of here it's quite a good shell as we knew so that's all been ground back treated and that's ready for the all of this will be ready for the encapsulation stage after we've done the repairs then obviously we had these issues on this front panel where it had a bit of a shunt here in the past which had moved the leg across so we drilled the spot welds out and cut the original rad support bracket off straightened the chassis leg with the porter power using measurements from the uh, the other side to make sure that the subframe bolts all go in the correct place because that's where the, the subframe bolt locates when we were speaking just about this looking like it was just a fairly superficial crash or impact what it's actually done is hit this section which is obviously bolted onto the subframe here which has moved all of that force through the subframe backwards and where the rear subframe bolt goes you can see how elongated this hole is now and there's actually a crease in the body there where that bolt and subframe has been pushed back so you can see that that's not quite level it sort of sits like this so we're going to have to try and have a look at what to do with this whether or not we're going to warm it up and bring that back into a position that we can get it to where everything measures up properly or it may be that we need to cut a little bit of a relief in the chassis itself to be able to get that right but to give you some reference this is how it should look this side perfectly round hole and the bolt sits nice and flush and totally level as obviously on the other side it's like that so we're gonna to have to have a look at that as well this side still in really good condition it's all ground back and then treated the only bit really is that little hole at the rear by the arch panel area also you did notice it's been jacked up here as well yeah. which i didn't know about it so obviously the side skirt hides all of this so what's happened in the past is someone probably with like a halford's trolley jack or something like that where it's got the really tiny little metal cups which are no good for sills anyway has been jacked up in the wrong position and then probably slipped off the jack and cause that crease there. So all of this will get ground back and then we'll probably have to put a little blob of weld on a bolt on a slide hammer and just pull that straight in the same here on the rear one as well. And this one's a little bit worse. So we might find we're gonna to have to cut this out and put a piece in. Once all this is cut out and we get to see what the state of that is from the inside, whether or not we can straighten that from the inside or pull it with a slide hammer or whether or not we need to put a section in there. We'll decide when we get a little bit further into it, but that gives you a solid idea now of where the car's at, what's required to get it to a proper standard of repair and protection. It's just a time consuming process, but one that you can only really do if you do it to this extent. Hence the two, three week block in the diary and the, uh, and the slide 
content in your wallet, mate, but <laughs> yeah, it's well worth true. it. And a side note as well, whilst obviously you've been away in the week, all the bits have gone off to zinc and powder coat. Yeah. Uh, so all the chassis and suspension components, bracketry and stuff has all come back. We're still waiting for a couple of bits to come back for like the hubs and the uprights, but heat shields, brake line brackets, center roll bar brackets, rad supports, the aircon drain bracket or the ABS brackets. So uh, when we do a powder coated set, it's not just hubs and uprights and trailing arms. We take all the brackets off of all the ABS wires and these get powder coated. So when it all goes back together and there's nothing that when you look in the wheel arch, you go, I can't believe you put that back on. Um, so it should look like brand new when it's done. Just a guess of PSA, which I didn't know about this. I brought these along today because I went to Tegra to pick them up. These are a replacement. So if you're running, I don't even know what the year, the end year is where they change the design a couple of years ago really is when it started to come in um, but essentially they just crack along this section here so obviously if left for too long that's quite dangerous because the bolt and the damper or the car is supported via that bolt yeah so once that cracks you end up with the and it turned out actually both of mine had cracked underneath as well so it was a free replacement but yeah worth checking if you've got an older version of the yellow speed coilovers just to check whether yours are split as well it's mad even just seeing all the stuff out laid out like this in my head it's always been like oh it happens to other people's cars so to see that all this stuff's going to go on my car and it's going to look this fresh it's just wild again this is obviously something if you're long term thinking of keeping the car that it is worth investing in for the future because in the next five to ten years i don't really know how many of these are going to be left unless they've had some major work done like this it's definitely worthwhile thinking about or just planning for in the next few years or whatever just saving up because that's exactly what i've been doing pretty much ever since i drove adrian's car the garage ep3 own now that was pretty much when I was like, I need to do this to mine because this is clearly going to be the death of it if I don't. Next steps for this then are the panels going to go in? Yes. So obviously, like we were saying, when we left one side out so that we could show you the sort of like the, the comparison between the two or what it was before and what it looks like now. And the next stage is obviously now that most of the corrosion is cut out, then it's a case of encapsulating this speaker rail behind the speaker area before we put the panel in because obviously once the panels and you can't protect that area so it makes much more sense to do it at this stage so we'll encapsulate all this area now that there's no corrosion or rust or anything in there and all the rust has been treated and stopped the encapsulator then provides you with like a primer and prevents any corrosion from growing in there so once that's done then the panel can be fitted and once the panel's fitted what you end up doing is tacking it in in a few places then weld all the way around the outside then this area will get repaired once that's repaired it gets seam sealed so you seam seal over all of the, the weld areas so no moisture or anything can get in or out and then that area is then fully done and ready to go and then just work away along the rest of the car and once all of the metal work is done the seam sealer is the next stage once the seam sealer has been done that's to dry otherwise as soon as you try and sort of brush any encapsulate or anything like that and it sort of tries to peel the seam sealer off so yeah especially in this weather it's really cold you just got to ever give everything the best chance that you can to cure which makes it last longer in the future and gives you a better finish whilst you're doing it there's no point rushing anything at this stage so once the seam seal is dry the encapsulator goes on the car then that gets keyed off with the scotch bright which is again another time consuming process another layer of encapsulator another scotch bright <laughs> wow and then the under seal goes on after that so there's probably a w at least four days really in between the first coat of seam sealer and the final coat of encapsulator and it being ready to a point where you uh, you can under seal it so wow. it's just one of those i mean if we lived in the bahamas and it, everything dried within about 20 minutes it wouldn't be so much of an issue but specifically at this time of year when it's pretty cold there's loads of moisture in the air you just got to try and take your time and make sure that everything's keyed off and dried before anything else gets put over the top of it otherwise we're in the same boat as the guys that are just spraying the underside of the car with under seal you're just trapping things in so yeah it's a little bit of a time consuming process but one that you can only do in specific stages yeah and it's also the only real way to do it to guarantee that there'll be no rust underneath. Exa exactly yeah obviously as with anything there's no absolute guarantee that everything will last forever all you can do is make sure you do the best job that you possibly can to give you 99.99 percent yeah confirmation that nothing's going to grow in the future and yeah you can only do that by taking your time with it and drying it and do and trusting the process really it's very easy to be like right one let's do the, do the next bit and then if you rush it you end up making a bit of a mess of it and you end up going back and redoing it anyway so a week from now we should be at a point where it's either ready to be under sealed or it's just been under sealed and obviously for us we need to try and get it done as fast as yeah, we can yeah, yeah. but obviously in the the interest and making sure that we get everything on video in the correct stage and in the right environment and so you guys can see every part of this process we will be a little bit patient in under sealing it well let's let the guys crack on cutting bits out welding in new bits let's see what happens in the rest of the day so this piece is getting cut out as you can see it's pretty 
close to being out to be able to see behind here with the best view it's probably ever seen since it was probably put together i guess here is that piece cut out and now we can see into the rear arch area and as you can see it's pretty bad that is some welding wire from when i got that little piece welded up and that was just a preventative measure because i knew something like this was going to happen at some point where all of this is going to get cut out so if you can also see further back just there that's just super thick rust so what is going to happen is this whole piece is pretty much going to get replaced all of this along here is going to get cut out because it's not in the best of shape but obviously it's impossible to do anything about this unless you cut this piece out to be able to get in this easily it's crazy to see it like this at this angle rather than looking through the rear speaker which is obviously just up there and fast forward a little bit of time and as you can see this panel is now all ground back the best as a possible what is actually going to happen which i pretty much knew was going to happen from when i got this repair done and see you can see this bit here comes along here and then drops down here that piece is all going to get cut out this bit of damage won't be seen because the time that it takes to hammer this down and get this nice you might as well just cut this bit out and replace it it's going to be quicker also you can see this little cut line here so this bit's going to get all cut out because this is rotten but something i have just learned which is pretty cool so you can see further down here you see this this little lip here so these are all the way along the sill and this was one here actually but this one's rotted away these are all little like drain holes for water coming out from the inside the arch or whatever that's why these are never just like puddles of water inside so this piece is now pretty much ready to go in terms of either getting stuff cut out or also pieces getting cut to fit in the gap so let me show you the other side and this is what is obviously going to happen to the other side so this has an acid wash to stop any rust happening and then this is the rust inhibitor stuff so you can see it's like looks like black paint but this stuff is going to stop it rusting and the reason for doing this bit now is obviously when the panel is in there how do you get in here apart from going through the rear speakers again this is drying now next step would then be to weld in the piece that goes in here here is another piece that's going to get cut out so you can see the pink line that's going to get cut out that much as a replacement piece then there's also this area here that's going to get another little box piece into that bit and there's also this piece here and like mentioned as well this is going to get pulled down this bit will get cut out somewhere around here to get this fixed as well <laughs> And as you can see, that piece just got sliced out and exposing even more areas like here that needs a bit of work as well. But yeah, just mad seeing the car just getting cut up like that and now it's got a massive hole in it. So those bits just got pinged off because you can't obviously see this rust behind here unless you take that piece off. That's why, well, both those spot wells got drilled out. You can see why you need to take that piece off because if you just leave that in there, obviously that's only gonna get worse over time. Also, alongside all of this stuff already being done, here are my front and rear anti-roll bars and the progress plate. This has come back from sandblasting and is ready to go to powder coating. These are not going black. I will say that, so they're not gonna be like all of these brackets so we're going a different color but i'm going to leave that as a little surprise for one of the future videos whilst the cars in this many bits might as well get some sort of service or whatever as well i've had this mugen oil filter sat on my desk for almost a year now since i visited bhp imports they were very kind and gifted me this when on my visit so i'll be throwing this mugen oil filter in because the car is due a service as well this is obviously quite a major service so this is the rust converter stuff getting brushed onto the car obviously this is much easier now there's a massive hole cut out underneath so that you can just brush it in without reaching your hand in that is where the car is going to be left for today welding obviously still needs to happen i'm going to come back before the under ceiling and we can catch that all going on as well let's just get
get straight into it. Dave, what's happened since yeah, I was last so in? So the sills have been repaired, the arch panels have been repaired, the whole car has been then keyed back again. The rust and capture release has been applied, then it's been seam sealed, that's been keyed back, re-seam sealed. And we're at a point now where we are ready to get all of the car bagged up so that we're ready to key it finally in the final stage before the underside protection goes on. We're sort of at the point now where the majority of the, the messy work has been done and we're into sort of doing it, hitting with the protection, bag the car, hit the, the, with the protection before it dries, then we can build it back up again. So if you want to walk around the car, we'll show you the arch panel repairs, the sill repairs, and what sort of state the shell's in now. Hopefully, by the end of today, if this layer of seam seal is dry, we can key it all back and we can get the underside protection on there so that the car then starts to look like something we can start to assemble and you're sort of nearing the end of the road rather than it just looking like <laughs> yeah. a pile of bits with holes in it sort of thing. So yeah, we're getting there. Cool. Getting there. Right, well, let's jump underneath this thing and have a walk around of it. So Dave, it's looking pretty different under here. There are no holes anymore. <laughs> Yeah, A, no holes, and B, all of the areas where it had been ground back had gone to bare metal, and then we used the rust converter on there to really kill any any additional surface corrosion or any corrosion that might grow in the future. All of the inside of the arch panel areas have all been protected, so like the behind the speaker area that we spoke about before. The arch panel's been repaired, the additional arch lip has been repaired. This has had a bit of a piece in here on the outer sill couple of little bits on the inner and then obviously we've applied the seam sealer on this side so now on the standard road car the seam seal is actually not it across every seam of the car so obviously when we take it back and you get rid of all the original seam sealer when we re-seam seal it it's actually a more comprehensive seam sealer job if that makes oh, sense right. uh, obviously when you're doing it by hand you can get into all these different places where the machine that the factory just goes pssst, and sprays it on the ones that are, 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 are programmed into it the bottom of the car now is sort of ready to be keyed back again now all the encapsulators dry so this is like i was saying before it goes like a really rock hard primer and it also traps and kills any rust stops anything from growing again so as a base for the, the underside to be under sealed on, then this gives you the best possible chance of, sort of avoiding any corrosion coming back in the future. This side again, arch panel replacement, small bit of arch lip work here, and the same again under there. The dent that was there before is much better now. And now rip up the side from replacing the whole outer sill. Obviously it's hidden by the skirt, so I believe that uh, we'll probably run with that how it is. But if we can, once the, the ramp leg's out of the way, We'll try and just make that slightly better before the underside gets protected. All of the seam sealer along here has been replaced and obviously refreshed, so no water can get into any of the seams, into the chassis channels or anything like that. And then obviously once all this is uh, undersealed, the cavity wax that goes in all of these holes afterwards, make sure that nothing can get inside, no corrosion, or you try and protect it to the best of your ability. The cavity wax is the last stage, but that's the reason that all of these holes stay empty pre the underside being repaired. There's been a couple of sill sections replaced. There was one, I think, here, I think it was before. Yeah. That's... So now obviously that looks totally factory. And the same on the other side, a small section. Yeah, so there. this side had, a, there was a hole cut in here. Yeah, and... There's two, two sections, one around about there. And then one, yeah, one was down about there. here. Obviously, it's nice that you can't see it even now in like the primer stage, which means that obviously when the protection goes over the top, it does look like a totally factory car. No sort of evidence that there's been any welding patches or anything like that. It looks like it did from the factory, which is obviously if you're, like we said to you before, if you're selling the car from a sales point of view, and when someone looks at it and they don't see that there's any repairs been carried out, especially not poor repairs, obviously it's a good thing for the residual value of the car. And obviously, as with anything, when you look at it, it's always nice to think, yeah, that looks proper rather than having sort of like a plate gummed onto it. So yeah, we are pretty much ready for keying this back once all the seam seal is definitely dry uh, and then the underside can be protected. Nice. It is very strange seeing these panels actually how they're supposed to look <laughs> rather than being some sort of rusty mess. As I mean, as a side note as well, there is normally a bung in here from the factory. Oh yeah. Um, but the panels that we supply don't have the bung and there's just no need for it. it does, it's just a, a point where moisture and dirt can be allowed allowed to get into the car which obviously is why the inside of the speaker area starts to rust in the first place so we blank all that off so now all this is like a fully sealed finished product if that makes sense all of these holes that are in the chassis along here all get bungs in afterwards like we said after the cavity wax and the majority of the other things are points that bolts go through so the really trailing arms go in here you've got abs holes handbrake cables get bolted onto a few of the other holes there so most of it when it's a completed product is a fully sealed shell there's not a lot you can do about some of the areas here and here in the chassis rails as an example but like we say that's why we really cavity wax the hell out of it before it leaves the next step is to get this thing bagged up then right yeah absolutely mate so as with anything when you're sort of trying to apply any sort of paint or coating to the underside it's really important that you try and protect the the paintwork 
it takes a few hours now to bag the whole thing up and tape it all up so that you don't get any overspray on it or it takes you three or four days post that if you don't do it trying to clean things off the the windows and the trims and all that sort of stuff so as with anything preparations key <laughs> Just looking at the car and it's just come down far enough where I can see in the interior. Turns out there is no interior right now. Let me show you. All the seats are out and everything. I've never seen my car this empty. All of this was because they were doing some welding. They obviously didn't want to catch fire to the interior. But yeah, carpets out, seats are somewhere. I don't even know where because I've literally just seen this. It's hilarious. Actually, I haven't even looked at the back yet. And yeah, look, the whole rear is out as well. This is wild. Good to see at least that the floor underneath the carpet is all good because that's the first time I've ever seen that. And I have found it. There is a pallet here. That's all my rear seats, the mats, and the seats here as well. If I'd known this, I probably would have come here and <laughs> bought some cleaning stuff. Pretty cool seeing the seats out of the car. Like, I'm mad that I own these things. And here comes the bagging section of actually getting this thing prepped. So as you can see, there's a load of tape around the entire outside of the car. Everything below that is obviously going to get the under seal and everything underneath that stuff's all got taped up as well so now this gets bagged so that obviously this stuff doesn't go everywhere <laughs> right then guys it's time. The car is fully bagged up and it is actually under seal time. I can't believe it's actually got to this point now. This is wild, but I thought before it's all getting mixed up, I thought I'd quickly show you what's going on. So what we have here is, so this is the under seal itself and then this is the hardener. So obviously it's separate at the moment. Basically once these two go together, got about an hour before it fully sets hard. So it's one of those things that's got a quick turnaround time because of the time of year that it is, it's also going in this bucket of hot water to be able to soften this up because it's quite hard in there at the moment. <laughs> and as you can see, Jake is in this lovely, fetching outfit ready to spray this stuff because it's pretty messy yes yeah um, you can control it but yes it can be quite messy and on controlling it that is what yep. this nozzle is for yes yeah, so there's a gun i've got this little pressure regulator here it just allows me to evenly apply it throughout the process really so nice temperature dependent as well we've been a cooler day i can just turn it up slightly so it allow the mixture to come out nice enough so sweet so what is the actual plan in terms of how do you tackle something like this <laughs> right so yes yeah, so i've got my products at the minute i'm just warming them up in the bucket and i'll mix the hardener and then after that i'll lower the car down slightly and i'll attack all the arches first and i'll send it up and i'll do underneath and work my way from front to back and then just literally allow it to cure then yeah we'll have to open the doors because it does get a bit stinky <laughs> right cool well i guess this is it this is actually this is it the the bit that's what this is all really yeah, about. Yeah, this is the final product now that we'll apply and that's it then, other than cavity wax after everything's reassembled. But this is it. Wow. This is your top coating. All right, well, let's get on with it. Let's see what this thing's gonna look like. <laughs> <laughs> look at this, this is like surgery. It's actually screening off, so it doesn't obviously cover the CP3 that's in here for a fast road setup. <laughs> Just like that, the entire underside of this thing is done. This is absolutely insane. Like, I cannot believe, I just cannot believe I own this car. This is crazy. So the whole underside is now done. And as you can see, it looks so good, super fresh. Looks like a brand new car under here. And that's without all of the new stuff going on as well. So super excited to see that. Unfortunately, not gonna see that today because not all of it has arrived. Even just seeing it in this state, it's just crazy. I just, what has happened? How, how has it got to this point? <laughs> what 
I will do though is I will show you some of the suspension stuff that is done because it looks so good. Just look how fresh all of this is. I still, it just blows my mind that this is going on my car. Insane, fresh bushes in everything, brand new, everything. Oh, it's just insane, absolutely crazy. So there's still bits to come back from the powder coater that are gonna match up with this stuff. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing all of this stuff on the car. Also, the other thing I will go in more detail in all of this stuff, because obviously this, if you remember, is a optional package. Today is the day it is actually all complete. As you can see, the car is on the ground. I haven't seen underneath this thing yet, so I don't know what it looks like, but it's just about to go up on this ramp to get the fast road alignment like I had before. It's such a shame that the drive here was so filthy and disgusting because look at how terrible the car looks. It's pretty grim. The moment of truth, let's have a look at what this thing looks like. I haven't seen it. We're going to reveal it behind this. Your first time seeing it is my first time seeing it. So here we go. Let's see what all this hard work has come down to. literally brand new. I'm actually like lost for words. Everyone that has saw that I was having this done, that's had it done already, were like, you're not gonna wanna drive it in the wet now. And I can understand why. It looks insane. I don't even, I, li I have no idea what to say. I have actually, I'm speechless. Let's get Jake in and let's have a walk around this thing to actually show you everything that's happened. So Jake, looking like a brand new car underneath here. <laughs> yes. So man. what exactly has happened since I was last here? You saw as applying the underbody protection. And since then we've let it cure and dry and then do the full ground up build then. As you can see, all your powder coated kits on now, all the new bushes, every single nut bolt clip has been replaced. See some of the new clips here, every nut bolt. And then we go above and beyond because everything that comes off, why not refurb it while it's off? Yeah. So all the ABS brackets have been tripped down, but sandblasted, powder coated. So what I've decided to do is these are anthracite gray, which you can't really tell at this angle actually. It kind of does look black with everything, but once this is on the ground, you'll be able to see. So I've done this anthracite, this and anthracite, and I've also done the front anti-roll bar and anthracite. Just a subtle little hit of grey mm -hmm. to sort of blend in with everything in black. Heat shield's looking fresh and it's such a massive like contrast. Little bits like screws as well. Any screws that go, they all get zinc plated as well. And if the rest, why well, put a rusty screw back in when it's as good as this underneath? A few bits left to do. We've got to align it now. Bung holes are all exposed because after alignment, we'll cover to exit. We'll go all the bung holes up and then we're good to go really, mate. Yeah. I'm still lost for words, to be honest. <laughs> it looks so good. It's probably the only time ever where the underside of the car is cleaner than the outside body of the car because <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> filthy at the moment. Shame I'm going to make this all filthy as well <laughs> in the future. Oh, one thing to note, we've put harder rear springs on, but we've also applied uh, coilover socks to protect them. I decided at this point this was the time if I was ever going to upgrade anything because of doing all the bushes and everything, this was the time to do upgraded rear springs. So these are now, are they 16K? 14 seconds. With it being a daily still, we go for 14. So, so the originally eight before. So it should feel a bit more stiff in the rear. It's just another one of those things, as well as the bushes, to basically make this the ultimate daily fast road fun car. Oh, while we're here, let's see the Mugen. Oh, yes, you can see it. <laughs> there you go. There is the Mugen oil filter installed looks like no different to the standard Honda one, but hey, it says Mugen on it, looks pretty cool in this yellowy color that it is as well. Again, works well in contrast with the rest of the car. New rear camber arms. There was no point in putting the old ones back on just because they were pretty gross. And well, they were on the car when I got the car, so I yeah, don't even they know were, how long they were. They were a bit tired to be yeah. fair, so. so yeah, new rear camber arms as well to complete the whole rear suspension looking fresh as well. The car's getting the fast road alignment. This is 100% one thing I, as you know, if you've watched many of my videos, recommend doing. This little bit alone transforms how this thing drives and the added bonus for me this time obviously is that the bushes are all brand new so that's going to be a completely different feel and with the new rear springs in the back as well so i'm really really looking forward to seeing what this thing's actually like on a twisty road the other thing which is a huge bonus as well not that you can totally tell from here is that this front bumper now fits so much better than it did before as well i guess it's partly to do with the repairs that happened behind there but also partly because it's actually been mounted properly this time and it makes such a massive difference to the front of the car it's obviously 
actually quite hard to show from this angle. Although the gaps aren't perfect, this is far more livable than how it was before, which I'm very happy about. Another thing that I've decided to go for this time round is some socks for the springs for the coilovers. Now this is a preventative install really for the future if any adjustments or anything are needed because this pretty much preserves the springs and the collars and everything behind here so that they don't rust like mine did, which meant it was a bit of a nightmare to get these apart. If you're thinking of doing some coilovers, these aren't that much more money extra and I think it will save you a lot of annoyance, pain and heartache in the future. Although they don't look as cool because you can't see the spring, it's definitely a worthy investment to pick some of these up. So this time around I've done that and in theory it should stay fresh underneath here the entire time these are on. Also you may have remember from a previous video I bought some dust caps and new bleed nipples for the calipers. There are obviously more on here than this but mine never had them so I just thought it was worth getting them for this outside one just here because it was super exposed and it kind of just completes the look of the caliper. Another thing to mention whilst we're looking at these calipers obviously these do need a refurb and a respray to look their best as well so that is something I'll be looking to do in the future as well. So Jake, in here, I guess the only thing really bringing this whole area down is my rear disc looking very rusty, but everything else yes. looking amazing. So now the wheels off, we can get more of a clear view in here of the bits mm -hmm. that have gone on. So what exactly are you looking at in here? Yeah, so if this was out the way, you would see the brand new wheel bearings, powder coated and refurbished backing plates, your new camber arms, the full Super Road Bosch kit in the rear uprights now. Obviously every single nut bolt is replaced. New brake line clips, because why I put a rusty one on. New filler neck on this, because as you know, it's very common for the filler necks to be corroded and rusted. Yours wasn't too bad, because we've gone through all of this. I was like, let's chuck one on, why not? Obviously your coilover sight, you can see it better now. ABS brackets are all been refurbished, new little bolts in there as well. This rear arch panel looks so good now, especially compared to what it used to look like as well. Yeah, I think we still got a piece in your box somewhere, but <laughs> yeah, Jim does a great job of welding these in. I think he did a new return lip on it as well because it had rotten a bit there, but as you can tell. Yeah, you just can't tell at yeah. all, can you? It just looks like this is how it came from the factory. Which is what you expect of having a proper arch band replacement by us. We make our own and there you go. It's what you want. Yeah, exactly. So again, a bit rusty here. These need a refurb, but again, everything past that is fresh. So yeah, what's going on here? Same again. ABS brackets all refurbished, new bolts in there, our zinc plated kit that comes with our powder coat set anyway. You can't see the new bearings behind, but you can see the zinc plated drive flange, the new nuts, Super Pro bushes, caster increase ones. Yes, yeah, so I did have those before, and this is gonna be interesting because those were the only poly bushes I had on the underside of the car. So I do obviously know what these feel like, but everything else along with it, it's gonna be such a nice upgrade. Simple bits like this. So normally when you replace track then they come with a nut, a castle washer. We always use Nylox especially on our race cars as well. And again, we have to go with gold because the rest of the bolts are gold. <laughs> yeah. Same nice. with the ball joints underneath as well. Nylox and gold. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so it just ties together. It's, it's, yes. That's, I think the coolest thing is like all the bolts popping so much against the black, which is another reason why I went for the black because Cosmic Grey, I think, would have looked a bit strange. But having that pop of colour of the, every bolt sort of accentuates them in the arch liner here. These are all being fresh as well. That's so all. yeah, next step is the cavity waxing then, isn't it? Yeah, so alignment's all done now. Wheels are back off. What we'll do, we'll send cavity wax in every hole that we can see and then we'll bungle them holes up. It will drip, it will bleed out a little bit, but I think by the time you get home, you'll be absolutely fine. And I guess exit from inside out as well. Up it goes for, I guess, the final time. So Jake, haven't actually spoken about this fully. What do you get for choosing to go with the poly bush and powder coating set? The arms, the uprights and everything that goes with it. Now you can opt for the hardened rubber bushes or the super bushes. We always like to go for the super bushes for longevity, polyurethane bush, it's serviceable. You can pop the spins out and re-grease the sliders and that. You can go for the hardened rubber. People do that if they want to go full OEM spec. For you, you want to upgrade at the same time. So yeah, you get all your arms refurbished, powder coated, new bearings, everything zinc plated, nuts and bolts zinc plated, and I think we touched on it earlier that every little nut bolt bracketry that comes off will be replaced part of that. In terms of the package, so you get all your arms, new bushes, the uprights with a polyurethane bush in the Super Pro, and then every single bracket, as you can see here, nuts, bolts are all part of the kit. 
the bearings. Same on the front, all the roll bars get done. The little bracketry that holds them on. Subframes, lower arms, uprights again. New ball joints, bearings, dry flanges in them. So there's quite a lot to the package really. It's not just as people think, oh, it's just my lower arms or the rear uprights. It's every single thing, everything that can be powder coated is done. There's still stuff that I'm even noticing, even looking under it now, like at these little bolts here and things as well, this little bracket for that. Instead of it being just the big stuff, it's all the little bits as well, isn't it? It's yes. literally everything. every single bracket you can find has all been refurbished, refreshed. Same again, tank straps. Fuel tank oh straps. yeah, yeah, so hadn't even clocked that. They're brand new as well. No, you can keep looking for days, you'll see everything that's refurbished. <laughs> My thought of how this would end up looking, it's turned out exactly what I thought, where just the zinc just pops against the black. So yeah, hopefully that clears up anything you were thinking about in terms of the powder coated option, because as you can see, I think it's well worth it. It looks so much better under here. And yeah, just imagine seeing all that black lovely underside, but then with all of these bits all being as rusty as they were when they showed up. If you're ever gonna do it, now is the best time to do it as it's all off anyway. It will cost you less to do it now than it would be to take all of this stuff off in this situation get it done and done it again as well. Yeah. So that's it too, really, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's such a shame as well to take everything apart to then put it back as not refurbished, not rusty, but the outcome of it, I think people don't appreciate the amount of time and effort that goes into it. Like it takes time to strip all the ABS sensors down and all the bracketry and stuff like that. To get to this stage, it's it's got to be right and you want to do it once, don't you? So yeah, exactly. you don't want to rebuild it to this and then take it all back apart again to do the bushes in the future. So I understand it's budget dependent sometimes, but it's it's a nicer way to do it. So yeah, I think I would personally recommend if you are thinking of getting the underside done, I would recommend just saving for a little bit longer like I've done to be able to afford to do everything at the same time even though it's a slightly longer period of time before you get it done i think the end product you'll be far happier with than wishing you'd done what i've basically gone with which was the thing i was worried about if i didn't go for it i'd be really annoyed that i didn't go for it and here we have the final remnants of what was the car all in this box here so a couple of extra arch panels various other bits this is definitely a lot heavier than it was last time look at all of this in here and there we go the car is coming out for its first test drive since everything all went on underneath this thing so how it goes you can see how much better the front bumper fits as well which is very nice to see so guys got dave here the car is complete and road test done everything we are all good to go but before we go first of all i've got a list of questions i asked you guys on instagram so if you're not following me on instagram what are you doing so i thought i'd run through those with dave just so that clears up some things for you guys before we get into the most important question which is obviously the cost of doing something like this so dave in terms of like keeping the underside of this thing clean now can i jet wash it is that yeah you good? can jet wash it as with anything with the jet wash don't hang it super close to it the best thing to do it is you can jet wash it off from afar you can snow foam it hot soapy water and a sponge uh, to clean all the arches out and then jet wash it from underneath that's absolutely fine if you can damage it with a jet wash then i don't think we've done a good enough job <laughs> use a bit of common sense basically wd-40 works really well on all the powder coated bits as well a lot of people are trying to come up with things they can do i guess that are preventative before doing something like this so would you recommend doing something like rust converter for the surface rust or yeah i mean it's things like rust converter and basic prep that you can do yourself is obviously never a bad thing so if you can get in with a wire brush get all the loose stuff off stick some rust converter on it let it dry and then you put some primer on it that will help in the short term definitely do not cover it in under seal or wax oil or anything like that just please just rust convert it prime it and then leave it at that if you're thinking about doing it at this type of thing in the future because like we said in the, at the beginning of the process anything that you put on that car when you go to do something like this has to be ground back off so the more sticky oily stuff that you put on there makes this process much more time consuming much harder and you don't really achieve anything but yeah rust converter and things like that are definitely something you can do at home for sure so this is kind of a little of a jokey one but i think can still relate so like can you do ep2s but i'm gonna go off of that and just say can you do other cars yeah absolutely i mean obviously we don't just do ep3s we've done s2000s fk2s 205s mr2 loads of things that we've done already restoration of our subarus and evos so it's not specific to an ep3 the process is universal really there's certain steps and the stages that we do that applies to 
any car that we, we do that on. So EP2s, 205s, 1.1 Saxo, whatever it is you want to do. Nice. So would you ever say no to a car if like it's just too rusty, I guess? Yeah, and we have done a few times actually. And that is, everything is fixable and everything is savable. Uh, it's just how much time, effort and budget you have to, to achieve this level of finish. There's loads of different stages or sort of conditioned cars that are either at a point where you're like, uh, it's probably cheaper to reshell it. Not many people want to reshell the car because of the chassis number things that you have on, on logbooks, but it's not really an issue. There's a tipping point basically where it's much cheaper to reshell it or to start again. That said, we have repaired some that have been in really bad way and the cars have come out really, really nicely, but obviously there's a uh, cost and a uh, time frame attached to that. And if you're not prepared to get into that when we first health check it, then obviously you need to try and sort of like weigh up your options or whether or not it's, it's better to reshell it. But yeah, we have turned cars away. Did one yesterday actually. <laughs> right. What else do you guys do? So can you do interior restorations, engine bay, like spraying, everything like yeah, that? Yeah, so in, in the engine bay spraying is a part or a choice that you can make at the stage that you did. Uh, obviously, when we take the engine out, you can then prep the engine bay, paint it, put it back together into whatever spec you want. Interior, you can do the same thing, put a cage in, paint it, seats, safety systems, whatever it is that you want to do. If you've got an idea in your head or something that you can, you can foresee and you want to achieve, then we can help you get there. But again, it just depends on, on which part of the process you want to do. And as with anything, planning what you want to achieve with the car long-term helps you budget and know which order to do it. But yeah, we can do interiors, engine bays, anything. A lot of you EP3 owners, I understand this one. So should I remove the arch liners in the rear, exposing the crusty wheel arch or leave it covered until it gets treated? So my thought process on this is always that if you've got an EP3 and you're already aware of the issues that they have in the common areas, take the arch liners out, clean it all up, dry it all up, get rid of all the loose cor corrosion, rust treat it, and then if you've got a dry arch liner and you're going to go through this process, you can put it back in or you can leave it out. There's no like right or wrong. The reason these rot behind the arch liners is because they've been on the UK road for 20 years and the, the arch liners get saturated with water and salt over the different seasons and winter. If you want to take it out in the short term you've got the car for the next five ten years and you're thinking i'm going to go through this process how do i best preserve the car until i've got the budget to do it then absolutely get, crack on but like i say just make sure you're, you use the correct products and you prep it properly there's no harm in trying to treat things like ad hoc i guess or like sort of as you get to it but just make sure that you have the end goal inside yeah. so you know what you want to achieve because there's no point just treating something and think meh it's done now or taking the arch lines out and thinking oh, i'll just leave that now because the arch lines caused the issue or well, yes to a certain extent but if you drive it all winter with nothing there, then that will accelerate the corrosion that's already taking place. The big question, there's two parts to this question. So how much does something like this cost and can it be done in white? But I suppose that's just like, you can choose any color. Yeah, you literally can choose any color you want. The product we use in tint with body color, obviously it's a little bit more of a process to make sure you've got the correct color primer and thing there so that you've not got to apply four or five coats. And cost wise, do you want to talk through the invoice? Yeah. So this, we have a base cost, which is assuming that the car does need no repairs and it has no big holes in anything the car's totally straight just to do the underside which is removal of all the components like you saw in the video take the car back to bare metal everywhere rust treat it key that rust encapsulate it key that under seal it assemble the car with your existing components or a powder coated set depending on what you want to do but the base cost is assuming that you use your existing bits bleed the brakes set it up cavity wax it we rebung it and that's three thousand quid then the powder coated set on top of that is 1458 plus the vat and then seal repairs are on their own 720 if you do it part as part of the restoration that's 600 per side the reason it's less is obviously because you've already got the entire underside of the car off and it's ground back and treated so there's a lot less labor involved in doing that arch panels are 300 pound per side as part of a restoration 400 pound per side if it's done without a restoration this is all plus vat on these prices it can be three grand as a base or it can be 10 grand as a, a top line if you really spec it up with different coilovers wash kits blah 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 everything that we do with the health check we give you a base cost and you have to treat that as a base and accept that some things can and probably will increase i.e when you start to take drop links off you're probably gonna have to replace them because the nuts don't come off they might be playing a trekker and there might be a few other bits and bobs and then so that base then becomes a little bit extra and what we try to make sure is when you come along to collect the car is you don't go well you said it was gonna be three grand yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You, you have to treat it as a base until you start taking things apart you just do not know and like with ollies you take the front bumper off and you find that the rad exactly. support's broken and you need to do that as well so just be aware that these costs are a very very good guideline of what you're expecting to pay 
But as with anything of this nature, you just have to accept that some things can and probably will break. This is the invoice of what mine has cost. Bearing in mind, mine, you would say, is a pretty good one, right? Yeah, as far as they go, yeah. Obviously, we had to put a pair of arch panels in it. It had a couple of patches in the sills, full new rad support cross member. There's a little a patch on a floor pan that we did. And obviously, you had full powder coat set. It had a fuel filler pipe, some new rear camber arms, AC rear gas, some bigger rear springs, coil over socks it had as well, yeah. engine oil, the total works out about 663379. Let's say 6,650 pounds just to make it easy, which is obviously a huge number, but I'm hoping what you've seen is that there's a reason why it costs this much and there isn't really another way to do this job properly. So you just have to bite the bullet and commit to that it's going to cost that much. And yes, this is maybe not a car that you think is worth that much, but it's about investing in it in the future. If you're not doing this in the next five to 10 years, there's not going to be many of these left just because you, there is no getting around the fact that these are rusting out. So it's one of those, I think it's getting to that point where you've got to start spending this kind of money if you really want to keep it on the road for the longest possible period of time. If you break it down as well with the amount of parts that are on the car it's not just that's how much we charge in our labor at all when you break it down there's a lot of parts i.e full bush kit all new wheel bearings new ball joints new truck ends every bolt is zinc plated or everything's powder coated filler next ac gas five liters of oil you break all that down and actually that it doesn't matter what you do if you keep adding parts to uh, something the number just increases realistically the residual value that you keep in the car from doing this means that it's not dead money per se. And it also means that when you drive it, you like we said at the beginning, is that you will feel most of those pound coins when, <laughs> when you're driving it, rather than it just being something that looks and feels exactly the same. And yeah, there's no getting away from the sum of the parts. It's just everything costs a lot of money nowadays. We appreciate that not everyone has this kind of money to spend on a car, but at the same time, if you want to achieve this level of finish, this level of protection and something that's done properly and it looks OEM, there's no big weld lines everywhere or patches, then I don't think that is a better or cheaper way of doing this. It's certainly not for us anyway. The amount of time that we spend on these isn't reflected in the cost. We try and be as fair as we can. And I, st I understand that six and a half thousand pounds is a, it's a lot of money to anyone, but I really feel that this is great value for what we've done. Yeah, and I also want to mention, like, I don't have a load of money just stashed away. Like, this is something, yeah, well, <laughs> especially not anymore, I've paid this. But it's that I've planned for this in my head for the, at least four years, and I've been saving for that long. So I know that this sounds like a crazy amount and it is but i've kind of known this has been coming for that length of time and then obviously since the health check i was like this kind of does need to happen sooner rather than later for this car because it is a good shell worth saving and it's going to cost me more if i don't do it sooner if that makes sense so yeah it's just one of those like for me this car is too good to just let it rot away. And I think in the future, the price of these will start going up and who knows where they'll end up, but it's only gonna be the ones that have had this kind of work done that are gonna be around still. So if it is a car you're thinking of keeping long-term, I do still think it's worth it. And as I hope you've seen from the videos, the amount of work that goes into it, it does justify the price. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully, but yeah. I, th I think it does. And I think it's all relative. If you've got a hundred quid car and you want to spend a hundred quid on it, Jesus Christ, it's a lot of money. Realistically, this is a six grand car and you're spending six on it. It's not worth six anymore. It's probably worth closer to 10. What you'll get from driving it now is from what it was before, I think is a big plus point. People look around and go, now it's proper. And because you knew four years ago that this was going to be something that you're going to look at doing and you had that foresight to do it, then once you had the health check, you planned it properly and went, well, this is the, what I want to achieve. This is the spec that we're going to go for. And it makes it much easier to stomach <laughs> the cost yeah. because you knew everything that you wanted to do during the process, if that makes sense. Yeah. So really happy with the outcome. Just for you guys that have made it long enough through this video, as you can see, the Civic is back with the S2000 now and Motion are going to do you guys a deal if you've been watching this video all the way through. So if you book your car in for either sill or arch repairs or for a full restoration then motion are going to give you those panels for free or those repairs basically just make sure you say that you came from my videos or that yeah that i sent you whatever that doesn't include the labor the panels themselves will be free of charge if you book in with motion motorsport get books in with these guys as you can see the work's incredible anyway back to the video yeah i'm super happy with how it looks as well obviously it looks insane and I still haven't driven it. But yeah, I just want to say thank you to you, Dave. That's right, dude. And we'll um, see you in a few weeks. Oh, uh, yes. As part of this, there's a nut and bolt check that happens after about 500 miles, isn't it? Yeah. So obviously, as with anything that you powder coat, everyone will know that have had a set of powder wheels powder coated and they haven't cleaned the hub face up or anything like that, is that powder coat softens through heat cycles. Now, all of the brake 
mountain surfaces and stuff get ground back anyway. So there's no real danger of anything falling off. But in the next 500 miles, what we say to everyone that has this process, you come back in, we recheck the alignment and we do a full bolt check as well, just to make sure that there's nothing that's coming loose, falling off, failed, things happen. And just to give you some peace of mind moving forward, because obviously you don't want to be making treks up and down the country to work and stuff at back every day and thinking, what's that noise? Or taking for a service or an MOT or doing something yourself and thinking, oh, this is loose. And we're trying to try and make sure that as part of this, we give you some sort of aftercare as well. Just see you in a few weeks, really. And yeah. uh, hopefully nothing's fallen off. <laughs> This is going to be legitimately the first proper drive in this car. I picked it up from Motion two days ago, didn't really drive it yesterday because I wanted to get my genuine reaction of how this thing is on camera for you guys. Now you might be thinking, why does this matter? Because you've just had the underside done, you can't see anything. But the big change and the thing that I'm going to feel the most moving forward with driving this car is that the entire underside has had a full bush replacement with some polyurethane bushes to replace all of the old Honda rubber that was in there before. And with that upgrade, this basically makes this car pretty much exactly how I want it to be. There's only a couple more bits I want to do to this thing, but from a performance wise, this is everything. So it's going to be really exciting today to see if I guess everything I've done to this car has been worth it and I have made the car that I hoped that I did make. But even just from the drive back from Motion Motorsport a couple of days ago, this thing feels incredible. So I cannot wait to get this thing on a twisty road that I know to be able to experience that. So a couple of things to note already from what I noticed on my drive back. So basically the whole drive back from Motion for me is a motorway. So you don't really experience much. But what I noticed actually as soon as I drove out the unit, it's really hard to explain, but it just feels like it's like stood up more. And I don't know whether that's because the ride height in the rear is actually higher than it was before because it was sitting a bit too low in the rear or whether just everything it just I don't know it just feels like it's set upright which I know doesn't really make any sense as you may have just heard then there isn't any knocks and bangs anymore so before I like, had a knocking sound in the rear which was probably down to that yellow speed coil over the, the bottom piece of that right we're in third let's see I've missed this car. Oh man, it's so good to have it back. Yeah, just the way, even now, like the way it's riding over bumps and things, I guess it just feels more solid and complete. And I think also what I ended up doing was doing a 14K spring in the rear. So Motion have recommended a 14 due to the fact that it's not a track car, it is still a daily car. Yeah, sorry. So <laughs> you would usually get like a 16K if you're tracking the car. But what I should feel a difference in, obviously the rear is gonna be stiffer. So what Dave was saying was that I should feel the car want to rotate more and feel the, the back end want to come round quicker than before. So also just to be wary of that. I think the biggest difference even just from driving standpoint is just it, it does just feel like a car is completely together again. So effortless this car, I absolutely love it. What I'm trying to create with this car, well, what I'm hoping this drive is a realization of is this fun like B-road car that is still great as a daily, but so it's not super aggressive, but it's like just this perfect balance where if you want to have fun in it, you can, but it's still not too unlivable. And I think a mixture of the poly bush and these new springs in the rear, I'm hoping is going to give me the feeling that I'm hoping for because even with the original bushes and the fast road setup I had it was already amazing so the fact that I now have the bushes on top of all of that stuff is very exciting oh so good uh, the LSD as well so even at just like normal driving speeds, like driving through a town center or something with a speed bumps or what have you, it doesn't crash and clunk around anymore, which was one of the first things I noticed once I got back on roads I'm familiar with that I drive every day. Like you start to pick up on all those little bits. And it's, it is obviously hilarious because the amount of money I've just spent on the underside of this car, if I'd left it all as it was, just put all the standard stuff back on, I would have just been gutted because it cost all that money, but you won't feel any difference. And I think that's why the powder coat and bush package from Motion is actually a great option, especially as the car is completely apart. Oh yeah, even all the, over those bumps before, it used to be such a horrible crashy mess. Now this car for years to come is gonna be the best it's ever been, really. The underside doesn't come like this from the factory. 
the bushes aren't as good as this from the factory so it's a worthy investment into the car for the future driving experience of the car but also to actually keep these things on the road as you guys would have seen like most from most sport was saying my car wasn't that bad like it was an eight out of ten and you saw how much rust got cut out of it still right this road's pretty bumpy so i'm intrigued to know how it's going to handle this whilst accelerating oh, this revs so much quicker than the s2000 <laughs> So it just feels so much more nimble on the, on its feet now. It feels like it wants to dance with the road rather than feeling a bit sluggish. And although it still kind of follows because of the LSD, it kind of grabs the camera of the road and gets the sort of tram lines a little bit. It just feels like more nimble on its feet. I guess it just feels a bit more direct for a daily car. I think this is the perfect way to have done it, really. I'm, I'm super happy with how it's turned out already. I haven't even thrown it into any twisty roads yet. My concern was that I was going to feel a lot more and it was going to be just a lot more bumpy and raw with all the bushes being replaced. But actually, because it feels so much more tight and complete, it's, it, there's less knocks and everything. Yes, it is probably stiffer because it feels so much more together. It doesn't feel as crashy and as bumpy now, which is really nice. But what I'm looking for from a daily car that's still fun to drive, like this raw driving experience where you can still throw it into corners and what have you, I think it's perfect really. It's one of my favourite roads coming up. This is the one I always test this car on. This is the ultimate test for me. Here we go. car yeah it just feels so much more direct like you turn the steering wheel a bit and it just goes the way you want it to go a little bit wet here but lsd makes such a difference <laughs> oh my god the confidence this car gives you, it just grips. The way it just goes around corners is insane. Oh my God, it was already good before. It's just, this is the last like 5% that just takes it to another level. This car is so good. <laughs> I would definitely recommend looking into the full bush replacement makes this thing feel insane. All right, got a tight corner coming up here. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, I actually don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm actually mind blown with how that just went around that corner. Oh my God, this car is incredible it is incredible i cannot believe how this car has turned out i have no regrets this really is a complete car now i cannot believe that it's all come together like this i think we're gonna have to go back on the road yeah it just i think the way to explain it is is like it doesn't feel like anything is secondary so when you turn in you don't feel like you turn in and then the car goes after you you turn in and the car just goes with you exactly what you want it to do it does it straight away yeah the turn-in is nuts. I think that's the biggest thing. There's just no delay on the input now because there's no, obviously, there's no bushed rollover or anything like that. Oh. Yes. Before, it felt like the car was a little bit floaty, like you glide over things, whereas now it just feels like hunkered down and, and just stays stuck to the rows. The plan in my head has worked. I think that's sort of the, another crazy bit here is this is what I was after. And it's actually, it is what I thought it would, well, it's better than I thought it would be. It's always so tough to get it to come across on video what it, the car feels like, because obviously you're not here in the car with me. It just feels like it's up on its tiptoes the entire time. I guess because the, the engine and the performance side of it was so like, yes, let's go, let's go, let's go. Now the underside is able to support the same driving experience that the engine wants to give. It feels like the car all together now as a complete package is like, let's go, let's Let's go. One more go down this road. <laughs> Thank you.
you can't. You can't get better than this for this price point. This is unbelievable. And it's a little bit damp today as well. But it doesn't matter with these tyres and this LSD. Oh my God. See, that bump would have been so crashy before and there was nothing, no noise. Everything's come together. What a machine. The car drives incredibly well and now I don't have this niggling thing in the back of my mind that I've got to worry about the rust underneath the car. Like, it's like this huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders of, yes, I'm spending money on this car, but it's still rusting away. Now I don't have that. It depends on how you look at it, I guess, because yes, it costs a lot of money. I'm, there's no getting around that. That amount of money going out of my bank account hurt. In the long term, if I hadn't have spent that money then, what was the point of spending any of the money on the car if it was just going to rot away and I'd have to pull the car apart or something in the future. That's why I committed to saving it now. Plus, look how good it looks underneath. Yeah, I'm super happy with the results. As you can see, the EP3 is back at Motion Motorsport. It's been about five weeks since I was last here and picked the car up. And now it is time for the nut and bolt check and just general check over of the entire car. Since I was last here, there has been lots of terrible weather. There's been flooding, there's been ice, it's been like minus seven. There's been salt on the road, there's been muddy roads. Everything that you could possibly imagine that would make the underside of this thing not look great. This car has been driving through because if you don't know, this car is the daily. I haven't seen underneath this thing yet. The plan is for this thing to go up in the air. Currently, Jim is inside checking behind the speakers and it's got the rear seats out everything. Just looking back there first. This will go in the air and that'll be the first time I see just how bad the British roads have been to this thing in the five weeks since I picked it up. Right, Dave, wheels are off. Car's in the air. Sorry. It's really dirty. <laughs> like, it's so dirty. Obviously, we do the bolt check anyway, but just for some transparency for everyone, I'll just get a sponge and just wipe all this off just so you can see what it actually looks like, rather than just hidden by all this insane amount of mud that you've managed to get on the bottom of it. I've cleaned the outside of the car. By doing that, it sort of makes it look like the car's nice and clean. But I deliberately left everything on the underside so that everyone could see just how bad it is. The thing which I think is worth mentioning is how much stuff already is in here. That is terrifying how quickly that amount of stuff has gone there. Yep, it's the, and, that, and that's the thing where I, like there's almost an argument to keep an arch line. Once you've done the underside, if you're going to put the arch liners in and then take them out every two, three weeks and clean it up, then there's not really any issue with doing that. And it does help prevent this, which you just can't get away from. We'll get a sponge and just quickly clean one of the arches. quick before this is what every other side looks like and this is what it looks like after Dave spent what maybe five minutes on this I don't know it was super easy just to wipe down which whilst it was happening it made me realize that I actually have made a problem for myself in the fact that I now have more of a car to clean because obviously this looks far nicer than the muddy side over there as you can see a super simple wipe down with just some soapy water and it looks like this again <laughs> now that this proves that it still looks as good as when I picked it up only five weeks ago Dave is as I'm sure you can hear is cracking on around here doing the nut and bolt check around the entire car. So he's already done the rear side that I just shown you, but yeah, working way around. And this is to find if anything has come loose since everything went back together. Yeah, exactly that, mate. Because everything gets powder coated when things go through heat cycles, especially with the brakes, powder coat tends to soften and things can come loose. So what we try and do is we make sure everyone comes back just to go over the car, make sure nothing's falling off, nothing's moved, make sure that you don't have any issues. And it's more of like a sanity check for us and for for you guys to make sure that there's no worry that anything's gonna fall off or come loose as a result of the powder coat and it just means that when you drive it away from here now you know that it's gonna be absolutely sound it'd be nice if it was a bit cleaner but there's not really a lot we can do about that thus far there's absolutely nothing that's moved at all obviously everything gets torqued when we put it back together again so this is just about just spanner checking it basically and obviously because we run loads of these as race cars i can sort of do it with my eyes closed and just pick up various sockets and spanners out the toolkit so we're pretty good mate i'm going to do this last corner now send it up do all the fuel tank make sure all the brake lines and everything are all good there's no leaks anywhere and 
now the car is fully in the sky, you can see just how disgusting, uh, just how disgusting it is under here. This is what the outside of the car did look like as well until the other day, but the entire underside, well, actually, apart from what looks like this area, this is still nice and fresh. <laughs> <laughs> this bit hasn't been hit by anything, but you can see over here is just completely brown and gross. That's disgusting. Yeah. But I guess, yeah, this is what happens when you daily drive this thing. And I know I got so many comments from people being like, I wouldn't drive that in the wet or anything. I'm like, well, rip me, I guess, because there's nothing, <laughs> nothing I could do about it when this is the daily. Look at all of that. Ugh. Because the protection is all over it. If anything, actually easier to clean than it would be before because it will just wipe away. Based on how easily Dave did this whole area here, I could actually just wipe down the entire car in not that much time at all, really. Dave's just putting the wheels back on now and this thing's gonna come back down onto the ground and that is everything done for the day. And there we go. If you've made it this far in the video, then congrats to you. You're obviously very interested in this process. Thank you for watching the whole way through. Another point that we never actually touched on in the videos was that although obviously you've seen the process with my car, what happens if you do opt for this and something that I get as well is that Motion Motorsport take photos of everything that gets done. So you will get sent a document that has everything broken down. So you for your own records, or if you ever come to sell the car, you have an entire breakdown of the work that's carried out. Because obviously if you can imagine if someone just slapped some under seal on the bottom of this thing, it could be hiding all sorts of sins. And you as a buyer would want to see exactly the work that was carried out at each point to be able to know that you're buying a good car. So yeah, Motion Motorsport do also supply that as well. Fun little fact actually, by complete fluke and random chance, it turns out that when I was looking at all the footage dates for all of this, it was exactly a year to the day between me getting the health check done at the beginning and me going back for the nut and bolt check right at the end. Such a weird fluke that was completely unplanned. But as you can see from that entire video, the work is incredible. And just the overall complete state that the underside of this car is in now is absolutely phenomenal. So a huge shout out to everyone that's worked on the car at Motion Motorsport. Big thank you to everyone for even letting me come in and even film the entire process. Super rad. Hopefully this has inspired you to start thinking about saving your car. But yeah, that's going to do it for this one, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed this one. Please do consider subscribing if you enjoyed this entire episode. If you're still here, that's pretty good going. So you must enjoy the content. Leave a comment down below on what you think of this entire car now. I am so over the moon with how it looks, how it drives, and just the fact that I don't have to worry about the rust anymore. So don't forget to subscribe, like this one, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.